Starting out in wine is not easy. Where do you actually start? What's the very first thing you need to know? Hi, I'm Cyrus Shahardei from the Intervino School of Wine and in this video I'm going to teach you the nine words you need to understand the meaning of when you're starting out in the world of wine. Number one is grape variety. This is where it all starts, the grape. Wine is made entirely from fermented grape juice, nothing else, just pure grape juice where the sugar has been transformed into alcohol. Grapes can be white or red, as you've probably seen in shops, but there's also lots of different varieties of different families, if you wish, each with its own taste, its own aromas, its own smell. I'm sure you've heard of Merlot, Shiraz, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon or Zinfandel. These are all different varieties of grapes. It's a bit like apples. Granny Smith, Pink Lady, Golden Delicious are all different varieties of apples and each taste different from one another. In wine, the wine can be made from one single grape variety, so just 100% Merlot for example, but it can also be made from different varieties, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, like the wines of Bordeaux. In this case, we would call that a blend. Number two is origin. Appellation, denominación, denominazione, AVA, AOP, AOC, DOC, DO. These are all um, telling us about the origin of a wine. They ensure that the wine is of a certain style and quality. So origin is very important. Most often, these will be named after a region or a city. Champagne, uh, Chianti, Rioja, Bordeaux, Napa Valley, Stellenbosch, Mendoza or Napa Valley among many, many, many others are all wine regions that have given their name to the wines that come from there. Each country will have its own system to to authentify, authentify, to attest the origin of the wine. In France, it's the appellation system. In, in Spain, it's the denominación. In USA, it's AVA. Three is vintage. You may have heard of this word on many occasions with, with cars or with clothes. It means old. But in wine, Many people don't really know what it means. Uh, still, it's extremely important. With some wines, depending on the vintage alone, it can mean that the wine is great or, conversely, that it's extremely poor. Uh, the vintage of a wine tells you the year in which the grapes used to make the wine have been harvested. This is not to be confused with what year it was bottled in, nor the year the grapes were planted in. So when you're drinking a, say, 2009 Chianti, it means the grapes used to make the wine were harvested in 2009. After that, it takes a few years for the juice to turn into wine. And in the case of a good Chianti Classica Reserva, uh, it means at least two years aging in barrel. At best, the wine is going to be released from the winery in 2012, but it's still going to be a 2009 vintage. Four is new world and old world. When it comes to wine, the world is divided in two, the old world and the new world. The old world describes wines that come from a part of the world where wine has been made historically for thousands of years and is deeply rooted into the cultural heritage, basically Europe and the Mediterranean. The new world covers everywhere else. Regions with a much younger history of winemaking, places like Australia, New Zealand, the USA, uh, South Africa, Chile, Uruguay, Argentina are all included in what we call the New World, even though some have been making wine for nearly 400 years, it still is the New World. 5. The I. 
Now we come to the wine itself, the drinking and the appreciation. When we taste or drink a wine, we use all our senses. Sound, when the wine is being poured, it has a, a special sound. Sight, when you appreciate uh, the appearance, the look of a wine. Smell is when you smell the wine. It has a particular smell, uh, particular aromas. And taste is when you drink it. Finally, touch is when the wine is in your mouth and in contact with your palate and your tongue. The look of the wine is often called the eye or the color, but it isn't just the color. It's many other things, the, the, the texture, the contrast in the different colors. This is going to tell you a lot about the wine. From the eye, we can um, tell what the wine is going to taste like, how old it is, and how long it has to live, and, and much more. Six is the nose. The nose of the wine, or, or the smell, is the most poetic part of wine. This is when we look for the different smells a wine has, uh, which we call aromas, and describe it in, in, in all these poetic forms. The aromas tell us uh, a ton of things uh, about the wine. It tells us uh, what grape varieties were used to make the wine, whether the wine's been aged in barrels or not, um, whether it's young or it's old, whether it has potential to age or not, how good the wine is. Basically, the nose is one of the biggest windows into the wine. Seven is the taste. The taste of the wine uh, is only made up of three different elements, three tastes, sweet, sour, and bitter. You see, there are only five primary tastes that exist, sweet, sour, and bitter, and then there is salty and umami, but these two tastes aren't found in wine. When it comes to wine, we use a special vocabulary to describe taste. Sweetness is the same. We say, we talk about the, the sweetness of a wine. Um, but instead of sour, we talk about acidity. So if a wine is sour, we would call, we would call that wine acidic. Um, we would also use words such as crisp, zingy, fresh. These all describe different levels of acidity. Then instead of bitter, we talk about tannin. Tannin is a bitter compound that is found in wine. And if it's bitter, we would say that the wine is tannic. Okay, you might be thinking, hey, Cyrus, what about the thousands of other tastes such as blueberry, chocolate, vanilla, butter? Wait, 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 wait. These are not actual tastes, but they are smells. Yep, they are picked up by our nose through a phenomena called retro olfaction or, or more simply backward smelling. These smells are called flavors. Together with the tastes, the flavor tells us how good the wine is, uh, the grape varieties that are used to make the wine, where the wine comes from, how old it is, and uh, much more. Eight is flavors. As you know now, uh, flavors are not actual tastes, but smells. They are picked up by the nose when, this, when the nose smells what's in our mouth, um, as the nose is directly connected to our palate. These flavors are often similar to the aromas that you find on the nose, but they can also be different. As the mouth uh, brings up the temperature of the wine, um, the aromas evaporate more and the wine can be more expressive, which makes the flavors easier to pick up sometimes than aromas. Nine is weight. This is something you may have heard uh, of many times. It's thrown about quite a bit when it comes to wine. If you haven't, I can assure you that you will. Light, heavy, full, medium, uh, all these describe the weight of a wine. 
the weight is made up of um, a combination of things. Alcohol, uh, this is what gives you an impression of heat and unctuosity on the palate. Uh, the mouthfeel, which goes from liquid, we, we talked about touch earlier on, and the mouthfeel is all about touch, which can go from liquid, nearly watery, all the way to thick, rich, and nearly oily. Then you have the flavors, which can be either light and delicate, or go up all the way to intense and bold. Light-bodied wines are going to be light and delicate in flavors. The mouthfeel is going to be more on the watery side, and the sweetness and the alcohol are both going to be rather low. On the other side of the scale, there are heavy wines or, or full-bodied wines. These wines are going to have um, intense, bold flavors with a rich, thick texture and a rather high sweetness and alcohol level. So as you've seen, the, the world of wine has its very own vocabulary, its jargon. Understanding it means you will be able to both understand people describing a wine, uh, but it also means you can be very descriptive when you talk about a wine. This is going to help you uh, unbelievably when you're going to be in situations where you have to discuss wine with people in a restaurant or in a shop. These nine words you've learned will really be the key to unlock a whole new universe of wine for you. So make sure you learn them and you know them well. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about wine, make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube by clicking on the link below. Uh, don't hesitate to visit our website, intervino.com, and you can sign up to get all our latest videos and guides and learn lots of fun, exciting things about wine. I look forward to seeing you soon uh, for our next video or guide. And in the meantime, all that remains for me to say is santé.